Hello and welcome to the Thrustmaster World Championship highlights from the postponed round one of the season held at Australia's Albert Park. Mohamed Patel and his team Musto are comfortably leading both championships, followed by flag to flag Brem GP and Ghost Speed. For today's event we had some drizzle in practice and it made qualifying interesting so we have a grid that looks something like this. Patel leads the field away from championship rivals Martin Gosby and Yerni Simoncic. Brewer was also showing good pace in qualifying getting a P6 and the Twister boys are struggling a little bit in P10 and P12. As the lights go out, it's a pretty clean start from everybody at the front with the top five staying in order into turn one. There was some scrapping in the mid pack with a few drivers getting a closer look to other cars than they would have liked, but with no long lasting damage. Kiss and Hoyer though side by side through turn four and they try going side by side through turn five, but it ends with some contact and the Alessandro getting past the German. But the lap one action did not stop there. In the midfield there was a weird accident with Valeriano and Manasakis. The pair touched in the braking zone ending with Manasakis flying over Valeriano. Both somehow continued. On to Storm Charge Vod Bull who didn't have the best of days with Risto Cap. It almost been in it on lap 4 out of turn 12 but managed to save it. Then two laps later his teammate at the same corner spun on the kerb, ended up hitting the wall and receiving race ending damage in a team order saying go and fire up the barbecue. Race ending damage was also the theme for Fran Lopez in his Invictus car. He was the victim of a lag spike from John Eric Saxon and the Spaniard flips into the air and hits the start lights before landing in the middle of the road only to be collected by the unsighted James Sadler whose race also ends in the incident as do his underwear. Jim Parisis has had a few struggles this season and he didn't get any better today when on lap 14 he loses the car and smashing into the barrier he collects the innocent and now flying Camille Wieswa, both were unfortunately forced to retire. First pit stops came on lap 18 for Martin Gosby when he takes a set of the prime tyres. This turned out to be a bad decision though because when he exited the pits he was next to Michi Hoyer who had not stopped yet. The pair battled through the first sector before Michi Hoyer got ahead, losing Gosby valuable time. At the end of lap 19, Patel and Simoncic also take a pit stop for the prime tyres, but as Simoncic leaves the pits, he is marginally ahead of Gosby, who tried an audacious move into turn one, but running wide over the grass, which allows Simoncic to easily get P2. Gosby lost around six seconds to Patel in just one lap. FSR doesn't have a move of the year award but there were a couple of contenders today, the first being Marty Stefanko who tries it around the outside of turn 11 with Blair Disley and making the move stick, a wonderful pass showing the skill of our WC drivers. On lap 29, Michi Hoyer and Michael Francesconi showed what racing can be done on this tricky circuit. Firstly going side by side through most of sector 1, allowing each other just about enough room, but the Italian came out on top. Although it didn't end there, and the pair raced into sector 2 as well, with Hoyer getting the switch back at turn 9 and going around the outside of turn 10, taking the position after a hard fought battle. On to lap 39 now and we see Patel pitting again for option tyres, however P2 and the P3 driver Simoncic and Gosby were having a battle and Gosby put in a contender for overtake of the season with a brilliant move closely passing Simoncic around the outside of turn 11. At the end of the next lap Gosby pits but is he going to be able to defend from the powerful overcut, something that hasn't really worked this season. Two laps later, Simoncic pits, but where will he come out? Well, here he comes, and yes, Martin manages to stay ahead with Florian Becker having a lonely race in P4 behind them. 
Risto Kapi summed up a bad day for Vodbull after an incident which seemed to be a disastrous brake failure on lap 43. Stefanko though was certainly in the mood for some overtakes here with another attack on Blair Disley into turn 13 using the switchback to get past. At the front, Gosby and Simoncic had closed an 11 second lead of Patel into just 2 seconds after a stint of purple sector after purple sector, with only a couple of laps remaining. But after 58 laps, it was once again Mohamed Patel who is unbeatable with 4 wins out of 5 this year, closely followed by Gosby and Simoncic, his championship rivals. The two Twister boys manage to get into the top 10 and Michael Francesconi takes the final point. After five races in the Formula Sim Racing World Championship, Patel has a handy lead over Jernie Simoncic and then another big gap to Martin Gosby. But can they take the fight to Patel in the coming races? Musto still lead the constructors but the battle for second is close with flag to flag and ghost speed. Today's race though showed a wide range of passes on a difficult track but also showed how close these drivers are to the limit. If you think you have what it takes, check out the links below and sign yourself up. Keep up to date with Formula Sim Racing by following us on social media and subscribing to our YouTube channel. I have been your commentator Dave Paling and thank you very much for watching, thank you and goodbye.